Katya says, how can you find out if a person is participating in the Teams meeting with two devices? What is the best way to prevent it, especially if unauthorized people take part in the meeting on the second device? The unauthorized ones are not visible to others. And uh, this is, I've seen this question. I, you know, uh, in fact, there, I remember a discussion on an NDI call, so a, an MVP call with the product team, and somebody asked a version of this, of being aware of where multiple people logging in. If you go and do a search on this topic, um, there are multiple not unanswered questions or referencing old user voice requests that are, the links are broken, um, things that are out there. Um, and, and so I think the answer is, is pretty straightforward. I mean, I'd love to hear other thoughts on this, other scenarios, but um, the, one of the coolest features is the fact that you can seamlessly move between desktop and mobile and back again. It's awesome. It and we've, uh, we've all done it. Like it's the, yeah. I'm on a call. I don't want to miss it. I want to dial in on my phone while I'm then and go on mute. So I'm still in the meeting and participating. And who knows, you may have even improved your signal. Um, get in the car, driving, still in the meeting, get to where you're going back into the office and then switch it off and go back to the desktop. Like it, mm -hmm. it's awesome. Um, yeah. So I think this scenario, what Katya is talking about is like, if, if the person's in the meeting in there and then their mobile phone also dials in, so it looks like they're logged in twice. Well, who's using the other device if you suspect that there might be unauthorized people watching that? So I think what I put down, my, my response, and again, love to have other opinions here, but is that the only way you can manage that would be to, as the meeting owner, uh, to, if you see somebody logged in twice, ping them and be like, why are you logged in twice? There's no response, disconnect one or both. But there's no then, way to know. There's no way to know the second well, device I, whilst I'm you're sitting, in the meeting. If I'm sitting here in this meeting, doing this meeting, and I've got 10 people sitting behind, you're gonna have no idea. So mm, there's no quote. way of knowing. No. The, those other people only that if there's multiple logins of a single profile or an unknown profile and so one way you can control that is to make it so that uh the a meeting organizer has to approve adding in each person each device right but even at that though as they're approving each person each device are they making a list are they trying to refer back through your people you know we're talking an all hands meeting at a company could have two, three, eight, twelve hundred people logging into a meeting. Right. Um, it, I mean, it, you you it's can a security question. You can point, restrict right? it so that only people with your company domain, you know, logins can can right. access that. So that's possible. Um, and then you could restrict it to you know single device. Again, the scenario: if a person's in transit and is moving between devices, like I wouldn't want to. You can't just turn that off. There's no way to stop that scenario from happening. But if you see two profiles in there, you can go boot one of the profiles or both of the profiles. And then yeah. being in there twice is, a, is, as far as I'm concerned, highly useful from the standpoint yeah. that Teams, when we were in the process of going from Teams V1 to Teams V2, there were issue after issue after issue with browsers not connecting, the main client not connecting, and then yeah. some weird combination of both. So it was not at all uncommon for me to have to, to attend a meeting, yeah. you know, try it on one device. It didn't work. It didn't work with the main client. So go over to the, go over and, and, and log in on the web club, web client side. Then I appear, then I get the message in the main team's client, hey, you're on this in this other place. Do you want to stay there? Well, no, I didn't want to I didn't want to be there in the first place. Right. So then you well, can on, move back and 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 so it's it's a useful thing. Yeah. On top of that, some clients don't uh, I had a bank as a client and the the users when I would need them to share their screen with me, they would actually or if I needed them to use audio and, and video. They would have yes. to switch computers. They could yes. share the screen on one computer or they could use the audio and video on the other computer. Mm -hmm. 
So, you know, there's scenarios where that just totally makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And same thing with using your phone and your desktop. Mm -hmm. The only thing you can really do is just education of your users. Of If we find that you're actually doing something like this and including people, you'll be terminated. Do you know what's your HR policy? If you've got people and you're, you know, it, it, it's not something you want to limit because what you're going to do is majorly hamper your business of being able to do exactly all of those scenarios of moving from one device to another for so many different reasons to, it could be, as you said, to eliminate a technological problem. It could be you need to be on the go. We're talking hybrid. We're talking work-life balance. Yep. They're all really valid and they're all really important for a business, especially in this current day and age in the way that we work. But what you do have to do then is what is your compliance training for HR and what are those necessities? What does it say in their workplace contracts or agreements around how confidential things are? And if you are found to be doing any of this for any reason, you get instantly terminated. I mean... Well so the, the, from a technology standpoint, again, it's like one, one, there's no, uh, you don't have the ability, there's not a policy or a setting that you can turn off the multiple devices on, on that. What you can do is put up front the, uh, you know, the organizer control in and allow in, you can uh, restrict it to only with the domain. The one other step you could do is, uh, well, two other steps, sorry, is, is one um, is require screens on again, people that you don't want there might be sitting behind the screen and listening in so but you can you can make that a requirement for those meetings and again you create a workplace like that you're going to find fewer and fewer people that want to be there um so there's there's that risk the other side of this like even if you had managed devices running there's still no control over that mm -hmm. other than like you can restrict and only allow people to join from a managed device then you'd have more visibility into who is it in the profile, when they're in there, um, you know, and uh, from where they're logging in, kind of all those things. Like if I'm, I mean, other other issues, like if I'm in a meeting as me and Christian Buckley suddenly uh, logs in on a mobile device in Slovenia, then maybe there's something going on there. Like I'm not in both of these places. I, I'm just going to be suspicious of that you know, being that I see myself log in around the world. Um, but, but again, that there's nothing in teams around that. Um, that would be more of a network, you know, identifying that and the login and, and, you know, that, that side of it. So to answer Katya's question about teams, um, yeah, there's, uh, the, the, the only control that you can do is that the organizer to be able to, um, question people and boot people that if there's duplicates around that. I can't think of any other automation. Or we just make all meetings in person again. There we go. That solves it. That <laughs> solves it. Yeah. Solves it all.